Hey team, it's Ange here from Equenti Leadership and Learning with another free resource for you guys around supporting teams during a crisis. And <clears throat> there's going to be two key pieces of content in this. It's to do with the human behavioral response of people and their emotional response as they're dealing with a crisis and what to expect there, what's absolutely normal, the emotions we should allow for and be able to identify in our people. So I'm going to take you through that. And I'm also going to run you through how to do a structured debrief with your team. The one thing we know about this coronavirus crisis is that it is going to go on for a long period of time. We're not talking about days or even weeks here, but months. If you're a leader of a team, um, you want to know what these behavioral responses are likely to look like, and in particular, where your people might be getting stuck and need additional help and support. And also, you're going to be wanting to run regular debriefs with your team, particularly after they've invested like a lot of energy in response. And then they need a moment of pause and reflection and coming back together as a team before they go again, because this is going to come in waves, right? So that's what I'm giving you guys today. Uh, the first thing to understand is the uh, response to crisis in terms of how humans behave and their emotional responses. And for that, in the resource, which I'll link down below and yeah, make available to you guys for free to use with your teams, print it out, please take it to your teams. It is the Kubler-Ross grief cycle. Now, why use a grief cycle tool in this time of crisis with coronavirus? It's because we're experiencing loss. We're experiencing loss of freedom, loss of independence, loss of choice loss of normality and hopefully not but for some people you'll be experiencing loss of relationships loss of connection and even at times uh, loss of people that we love so that is why we're referring to the Kubler-Ross grief cycle um, to explain the human emotional and behavioral response so as you can see, if you haven't printed out the worksheet, just hit pause, do that now, and I'll take you through it. Um, so how this plays out in practice, it begins with stability. So that was life before coronavirus hit Australia, certainly. Um, and it's really business and life as usual, nothing to see here, we're all steady, okay? We're just going on about our business. And then the immobilization occurs. And this is where we're sat on our butts with the enormity of this event, okay? So something very bad is happening. It's knocking the wind out of us. Um, and we're in shock, okay? That's the immobilization phase. From there, um, we progress to the, ha the not very happy place of denial. And that's where we're going surely it can't be that bad surely people are overreacting because this kind of thing doesn't happen in australia and it doesn't happen to me it doesn't happen to us right okay that's the denial phase and man i can tell you i went through that um following denial we can expect a bit of anger and we're seeing that in social media now where people are becoming um critical of not just each other, but also the evidence around how this how this virus progresses and what the impacts are. So really, you know, in the anger phase, we'd be asking, why is this happening? Why me? Why us? Um, we're wanting to lash out and we're looking for people to blame. Okay, that's the anger phase of the grief of the grief cycle. What comes next is bargaining, and you go, all right. I see that this is really happening. I can accept some of it, but I don't accept all of it. Okay. How can I take my power back? That's what people are looking for in this bargaining phase. What can I negotiate? Where do I have to give and where can I retain some of my power? Okay. That is the bargaining phase. What choices are still mine? That's what we want to know in that phase. Uh, following bargaining, um, we can expect a moment at least of depression, which is, oh, 
this really is bad. I'm hurting and I'm sad and I'm starting to understand that life as we know it has changed forever and we feel stuck and it hurts to accept this. Okay. Um, now, clearly this is not a place that you want to get stuck. And in fact, any place that I've mentioned on this curve so far, not a good place to get stuck. And if you do find yourself getting stuck, we want you to reach out and get support. I'll get to that in a minute. So after depression is when we're fully accepting the magnitude of the situation and the fact that we're in it, really, and we're coming to terms with that. From there, we can start to progress towards testing, which is the moment of just acknowledging how tired we are of being sad. There's got to be a way out of this. There's got to be a way forward. And we, start, we might start asking questions about whether there's any gifts and lessons in this experience and maybe even what good might come from it, okay? And following that is acceptance and that's when we're saying, okay, I think it is time to move forward. It's time to create a new normal. I'm accepting that this event has happened and I'm now ready and willing to navigate all the changes to my life that I need to make. Okay, that is the Kribler-Ross grief curve and it's certainly, you can expect this kind of response in a crisis, but certainly in any kind of change or upheaval where grief and loss is part of what you're experiencing. Okay, so I'm teaching you this because I want leaders to know that the responses that they're seeing in their people right now are really normal and very likely they'll fit with that curve. Now what we typically see is people moving back and forth along that curve. You think you've got to a certain place and then we're sat on our butts again. Maybe the next wave is coming or the next wave of isolation or shutdown is coming and we're going to experience all of that over again. Okay. So for leaders to be able to acknowledge and accept that this is part of the experience for their teams, um, as well as yourselves, guys, this will be your experience too. Um, really useful, helpful thing because it normalizes it. Okay. It says we're allowed to feel this way. In fact, we're expected to feel this way. All right. Important thing to know. And so if you're debriefing with your team, and I imagine you'll be doing this online, many of you, some of you might still be face to face. Um, questions around that could could look like for your team how is this grief cycle playing out for us right now what does it look and sound like in our language where are we at on that curve and are we getting stuck at any one point okay if you're stuck anywhere except for you know testing and acceptance reach out for help and leaders if you see your people getting stuck um access help and support to help them through that and it could be more conversations with you it could be working with a coach it could be connecting them to the employee assistance provider um, there's like a, a range of options available and i'm sure your organizations are talking to you about that as well so the key thing is if we're getting stuck at any point on that curve other than testing and acceptance um, we need to get some help. We need to have a conversation around that just to move us along and allow us to progress through. Okay. That's the first part of the tool that I'm offering for you guys. And I think if you were to run a debrief with your teams at any stage in this crisis, like I say, run a debrief at any stage you feel like they need a moment of pause and reflex and reflection just to come back together. Okay, you can do it via video call, um, webinar, whatever it takes to bring people together for a discussion. And if you're running this debrief, I just wanted to give you some tips around that. So firstly is to set up a safe environment for this discussion, um, emphasizing confidentiality, emphasizing that every thought and every motion um, is allowed. So uh, that's the first tip around setting up a debrief. As it happens when I'm working at home, my cat, Chester, gets in the middle of every call. So hopefully he doesn't do that again for us. 
Um, we want to make sure we're offering every person the opportunity and the time to speak and allow sufficient time for this debrief. If you run it in a hurry or a rush, it will seem superficial and to tokenistic, like you're not really listening, like it was something that you were told to do. So when you're running a debrief with your team, allow time and space for the conversation to play out. Um, very importantly, avoid judging emotional stuff or reframing statements. Normally that's, uh, you know, what we think we might have to do as leaders, but the aim of a debrief is to have our people feel heard, listened to, connected and accepted and acknowledged for their experience. So try to listen and acknowledge the messages even when they might seem critical of us um, or even unfavorable for the organization it's really important that we're allowing that space for our people to feel heard and obviously at the end of the debrief you want to thank them for what they've shared for their honesty for their disclosure and follow up with the people who seem most affected and could use extra support okay so um, in the worksheet that I'm going to connect with this, supporting your teams during crisis, um, I'm also going to offer you some debriefing questions that can promote discussion in your team and promote some sharing of ideas and sticking togetherness of, around this experience. Okay. Um, starting with the basics about what are, what are our thoughts about the events that have unfolded, um, naming our feelings we can't experience an emotion that we can't name okay so there's a question there that helps you um, identify and bring about discussion on what your people are feeling um, what have been the hardest and most impactful moments what were the key events and what lessons might they offer us the events that we've handled so far in this crisis what lessons can they offer us that we can continue to apply as this thing unfolds okay and could there be any gifts in this experience now some of my clients are already starting to entertain that idea it's beautiful keep going look for the opportunities look for the possibilities um, yeah look for the gifts and the gold in this experience because it will be there okay um, looking back on what we've experienced so far, what are we most proud of and how can we help each other moving forward? There are just some suggestions for debriefing questions with your team. The purpose being to get our people together, to get them sharing, to allow a moment of pause and reflection and Chester, particularly to identify the people who might need the most help right now. So uh, this is the first recorded video that uh, Chester is featured in. I'm not sure how many more he'll show up in throughout this, throughout this time that I'm offering free resources to you guys, but um, I hope it's brought you some entertainment as well. And like I say, if there's anything I can do for you guys, reach out. I'm coaching over the phone and via Zoom. Now is not the time to um, withdraw or withhold support from your leaders who are all um, struggling with the experience of this. So right here, operating business as usual, doing what I do. Feel free to share this resource if it's helped you and thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, stay well.